Hey guys, how are you going? My name is Dom and today I want to talk about type annotations within TypeScript. So basically, type annotations allow you to declare or annotate the type of a value. You can do this on, for example, things such as variables, constants, function parameters, or even function return values. And this is not natively supported by JavaScript, which is why TypeScript is here to provide that functionality. So, let's see how this works. I have a main.ts TypeScript file right here, and I'm gonna declare a normal JavaScript function inside here. So I'll say function, and call this function getName. This will accept one parameter, which will be i, an index of an array. Inside here, I'm going to declare a new constant called names, equal to an array of some generic names. For example, Dominic, John, and then Sophie. Now, I'm going to use this i parameter here to simply then just return names at index i. So now with this function, I'm going to then declare a new constant down here called n equal to the return value of this function. For example, let's say get name at index one. So now we should see that n is equal to John because John is at index one in this array. So if I log out the value of n, we should see John. Now keep in mind when I save this file, uh, Visual Studio Code is going to generate a JavaScript file for me. So I'm going to say node and then main.js. Press enter and we get John right there. Perfect. So here as a JavaScript developer, you might know that this function returns the string type because you're returning um, a value of this string field array at this index, so you know it's going to be a string. But you can actually annotate this type within TypeScript. To do this, you simply just up here, put a colon, and then declare your type. For example, let's say string. That makes sense. So now you know that this function is going to return a string no matter what, unless you actually purposefully return null or undefined. Otherwise, you know that this function is going to return you a string no matter what. So I can do this. I can actually say safe right here. I'm going to say this is actually safe. I'm going to say the return value dot to uppercase. This is safe because I know that this is going to be a string and the to uppercase method is part of the string object or string class. So no matter what, I know that this function or this method is not going to give me an error. It's not going to say you can't do that because this is a string. So your safety comes from type annotations. And it's useful when developing a large project and it gets messy and big and you're trying to you know, organize it. And obviously having these types here makes you, you know, makes your code more readable and it helps you understand. We can also do a similar thing with function parameters. So inside here, I'm going to say i and then a colon once again, and then say number. So number is another one of these primitive types in TypeScript. So this is saying that this function accepts one parameter, that being of type number. So now if I go down here and I make this a string instead, it says you can't do that you can't provide a string to a function that wants a number. It's just not going to work. Now, keep in mind that when I save this, it still gets compiled into normal JavaScript. Even though it's probably not going to work, it'll still be compiled. This is basically only, only a warning. It's not really an error. It's more of a warning. So it's telling to you, mate, you can't do that. So we'll make this back to a, to a number, just like that. We can do a similar thing with the actual constant declaration. So we can say const n, then a colon, and say string. So now I know that whenever I refer to n, I know I'm dealing with the type string. So that's your safety once again guaranteed 
with the type declaration. If I make this, for example, something like 10, a number, it says, look, you can't obviously assign a number to a constant of type string. Now with arrays, you can do a similar thing once again. You can actually say a column and then say string, then put down two brackets just like that. And that right there is saying, yep, this is an array of type string. If I make one of these elements a number, for example, 10, it says, look, you can't do that, obviously, because you're saying it's a, an array of strings, a number, you can't do that. So you need to put an, a string right there. There's also a special type, and that is called any. So that any type sort of works like a normal JavaScript um, variable or const, uh, constant. So down here, I'm going to declare a new variable here and give this a name, for example, DOM of type any. I'm going to assign this the value of 10. So any means this can be whatever I want. I can go down here and say DOM equals something else, a string. And that's perfectly fine. So this is like a normal JavaScript variable, right? We can also do a similar thing with um, functions with the void type. So if a function doesn't return anything, you can actually say void. So let's make a new function down here called print message, accepting a single parameter called message of type string. This will be a void function, which means that it won't return anything. Inside here, I'm going to say log and then pass in message. And that's the syntax right there. So you know that as a program, you know, okay, this function will not return anything. It's actually quite useful. Like if you're working on a project together with a, with a few friends or you know, a team, this code right here makes perfect sense. You know by looking at it, this function does not return a value, which is why type annotation is quite important. So I'll just call this function right here, print message, and pass in the value of, for example, hey guys, how's it going? Hey guys, how is it going? All right. Save this, and then run this program. We see John in uppercase up here, and hey guys, how's it going? All right, and that is how you can use type annotations within TypeScript. You can do it on function return values, function arguments, arrays, constants, variables. You can do voids and obviously any's as well. Alright, that's it for this video. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you later.